But just as we have fantastic staff who work with our kids, we also have some great volunteers, and I would like to tell you about one of them. She's actually standing right next to me. This is a story of tragedy and a life that was nearly lost, nearly, had it not been for one of our volunteers. Robin Carter is a wife, Sunday school teacher, church leader, and teacher for Palmetto State Academy. She was a seemingly ordinary volunteer, if any of our volunteers can actually be considered ordinary, until she did the extraordinary. Robin's Sunday school class at Simpsonville First Baptist began volunteering at Miracle Hill Children's Home in late March of last year. Robin noticed that one of our young men, we'll call him Trey, who had been full of life and energy when they first began working with the cottage, now looked very sick. Within a few short weeks, this young man had gone from being a healthy and spunky 13-year-old boy to deathly ill and on dialysis three times per week. Trey needed a kidney or he would die. The pediatric team who was able to diagnose this young man with renal failure is actually here tonight, and I would like to stop and recognize them before I continue with my story, because as you will hear, this young man received several miraculous interventions. But the first was from this team of people who this young man's caseworker credits with having saved his life the first time. If you are here from the Easily Pediatric Team Center, would you please stand and let us recognize you? Once this young man was diagnosed and Robin saw that his condition, she felt a call in her heart and mind to get tested. She says she knew it was the Holy Spirit, so Robin responded to this prompting and got a simple blood test to determine if she was a match. As it turned out, she was type O positive, which means she is a match for anyone's blood type. She was off to a good start, but next the intense testing began, including a trip to MUSC for a test in which they injected radioactive material into her bloodstream, then put her in a machine to study how her kidneys would handle the material. After all this testing, she was deemed a perfect match for Trey, and the date was set for, the, for her to donate her kidney to him. Just prior to surgery, they ran a couple more tests, and a donor advocate came into Robin's room and informed her that she did not have to go through with it. If she wanted, they could simply tell him that one of the tests went wrong, but Robin didn't want an out. She wanted to help Trey, and she felt at peace that that was what she was supposed to do. The transplant was successful, and Trey was physically restored to good health on December 1st, 2010. He was almost instantly better and is now continuing life as the healthy and spunky 13-year-old that Robin first met. No more dialysis. Robin uses the word restoration in describing the experience, and she says that God is in the restoration business. Trey was not merely told that God loves him, but through Robin's selfless act, he has experienced it firsthand. While this is an act that we can all celebrate, the lingering question in most people's minds, whether they're willing to admit it or not, is why. Robin says that her driving motivation was, in a weird way, that when you do something radical, it will earn you the right to tell someone why. The gospel is the reason. She went on to say that too often Christians want to demand their, their place at the table. But when you do something radical and unexpected, Christians have the invitation, not the demand. Robin lives the truth. She said that God has given us more than we need with two kidneys, and now she has given life to someone else with the abundance that God gave to her. The impact of her actions, for one, is having an effect on, on many. Miracle Hill Ministries is a member of the South Carolina Association of Children's Homes and Family Services. This association is a champion for the needs of children in our state, and at the association's annual conference in February, they, gave it, they give out three statewide awards. I am pleased to announce that one of those awards was bestowed upon Robin. Unfortunately, she was unable to attend the association's conference to receive the award, so we thought we should give it to her tonight. It is an honor for me to present this year's South Carolina Association of Children's Homes and Family Services Humanitarian Award to Robin Carter. No, you can sit. <laughs> Well, thank you. You can sit, seriously. Um, 
I will say thank you so much for this honor and for um, this recognition, um, but I really didn't do anything special. All I did was recognize a need and respond to it. And um, you guys in this room already know what that is about. I just happened to, to respond the way God was leading me to do, which was through giving up of a kidney. Um, but all of us do that in our own special way of just recognizing a need and responding to it. And um, I know that there are um, countless other individuals um, that are more deserving of the, being called the humanitarian of 2011. Um, those are the people that um, turn their lives upside down to work for um, a cottage that takes care of teenage boys that um, turn their lives upside down to bring in um, a foster child when they've got preschoolers of their own. Um, those are the people that are on the front lines and those are the people that, um, that I would like to dedicate this to. That being said, I'll just remind you guys, I didn't do anything that every single person in this room can't do themselves. You can be an organ donor too. Make your, make your desires known, check that box on your driver's license, you can wait and die first, it's okay. Not, not everybody has to be a living donor, but everybody in this room can give that gift of life. And I just encourage you to, to consider that. So thank you very much.